In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can make a trinomial into a perfect square. We found that equations with perfect squares are easier to solve than equations that aren't perfect squares, especially when they don't factor. So if we can find the correct way to make something a perfect square, we can solve almost any quadratic equation. The way we make something a perfect square focuses on the third number, which we'll call c for now. The third number, c, can be found using the equation 1 half times b and then squaring the answer. We'll call this middle number in front of x our b. So for this first equation, we have an 8. So we need to find 1 half of 8 and then square the answer. Well, half of 8 is 4, and 4 squared is 16. This means if this last number was a 16, we would have a perfect square. Perfect squares are easily factored as the square root of the first term, x, the sine from the middle, plus, and the square root of 16 is 4. We now have x plus 4 squared. Let's try another example. Here we have x squared minus 7x plus c, or the missing number. And again, we find that missing number by taking 1 half times b, which is negative 7 in this case, and then we square our answer. Because we're dealing... because we can't take half of negative 7, we'll put the negative 7 over 1. Never do decimals in this process. We will always use a fraction, leave it as negative 7 halves squared, multiplying across. 1 times negative 7, 2 times 1. And we can square a fraction by squaring both the numerator and the denominator. Negative 7 squared is 49, and 2 squared is 4. This means for this trinomial to be a perfect square, the number at the end that's added needs to be 49 over 4. We can now factor that to something squared. Again, this is easily found by taking the square root of the first term, x, the sine from the middle, minus, and the square root of the last term. We can easily take the square root of a fraction by doing the numerator and denominator. The square root of 49 is 7, over the square root of 4 is 2, and we have now factored to x minus 7 halves squared. Even though there's a fraction, we can still work this problem like any other. We could even have a fraction for the b, or middle term, when we have x squared plus 5 thirds x plus c. To find that c, or number that completes the square, we again take 1 half times b, or that middle term, 5 thirds, and square that answer. Multiplying the fraction straight across, 1 times 5 is 5, 2 times 3 is 6, and then we can square that answer. Whoops. Squaring the numerator, 5 squared is 25. Square the denominator, 6 squared is 36. And in order for this to be a perfect square, that number added to the end needs to be 25 over 36. And now we can factor it into a perfect square. Taking the square root of the first term, which is x, the sine from the middle, which is plus, and the square root of the last term, it's a fraction, but we just do numerator and denominator. The square root of 25 is 5, the square root of 36 is 6, and we have factored this perfect square. So again, if perfect squares are easy to solve in equations, we can look at how a quadratic or a trinomial can be made into a perfect square by finding this number that completes the square. The way we find that number is we take half of the b, or second number, in front of x, and square that answer. And that will give us something that can factor into a perfect square by taking the square root of the first term, the sine from the middle, and the square root of the last.